what I want to do today is we've been studying a lot of topics. Probably need to stop looking at that. I think. <laughs> <laughs> we've been studying a lot of topics, and I want to see how much we know. And the biggest thing is how can you? How are you going to be able to answer? Because the whole point of why we're doing this is so you can be more much more knowledgeable, more confident in your faith. And I want to see how has it helped. But before we get into that, we had a question brought up last week about the second death. So, anybody find anything out since last week? We had a question brought up about second death. What does it mean? Any thoughts? Okay, well I brought some verses, so I'm going to read them to you. They talk about it. Uh, Revelations 2.11 says, Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what He is saying to the churches. Whoever is victorious will not be harmed by the second death. Okay, what is the second death? Let's read a few more before we get into that. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. For them, the second death holds no power, but they will be priests of God in Christ and will reign with him a thousand years, all right? So there is a second death, but it doesn't have power over those who are written in the book of life, Josh. Can it be just death? That's the second death? The first death was when you baptized? Uh, say what? No, go ahead. Um, let's, well, give me a sec. Let's, and we're going to answer that. Um, Death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire, and the lake of fire is the second death. 21.8 But cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, those who don't show up to church on time, idol worshippers, and all liars, their fate is in the fiery lake of sulfur. This is the second death. Ah, this, you won't go to hell if you don't show up on time. But it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> So their fate is in the firing lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death, okay? Uh, and, the, and so what, it's, what the big question is, is the second death annihilation or is it something else? Because that's what it sounds like. This is a second death. What's the first death? Josh had a question, you know, raised the, the thought that what if the first death is when you were baptized? What do you guys think? When you think of death, what do you think about Nothing? I think we were brought to life when we were baptized. Okay. Not because we were born again. So it's not. Part of you did die. But, yes. Or no. part, no, because we were already dead. We were already dead. dead. Yeah. So. It does talk about in baptism, it's like you, you know, go into the grave like Jesus did and then you rise up a new person. But I, but I don't think that's what it's talking about is that the first death is when you actually die. When you die, you like. But when you die, is that annihilation? Is that are you really done? No. No. So death, even though we think it's over, it isn't. And would the second death mean that? And we're gonna get into that. Listen to this last verse. Throw you off a little. It says, "Then the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur." Joining the beast and the false prophet where they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Alright, so here's where it gets tricky, Elmer. What does forever and ever mean along with tormented? <clears throat> what do you think? <laughs> what does it sound like? Eternal. Eternal torment. Right? But then we have second death. So how does... Eternal torment and second death go together. And that's her. We'll go to the next slide. All right. What is the second death? Okay, so I was doing some research, and this is the consensus I found. Of course, there's other opinions. Um, and the other opinion is annihilation. But here's the one that made the more sense. This is the second death or the destruction of the soul and body in hell, okay? Which will consist in an eternal separation of both from God. Okay, you die, the first death, you die, your soul and body uh, are, are... Separate. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, we talked about that last week. You know, does, do they still reside in each other? Does the soul and body go? But when you first die, it's not the end, okay? Okay. Uh, 
I think it'll make more sense as I, as I go. And in a continuous sense of his wrath and displeasure. So what it is saying is the second death is where you are eternally separated from God, both your body and your soul. No more. You will never again entertain the presence of God. The, the first death, you still have, you still go to judgment. You still, you know, there's still this judgment going on. But the second is that's it. You're, you'll never ever get a second chance. Nothing. Not, not the judgment is a second chance. All right. Here was a, a definition that I found. Eternal death or the second death is the ultimate form of separation. If a person dies in a state of spiritual death, all right, you die without surrendering your life to Christ, they enter eternity separated from God. This is the second death. Once a person has experienced a second death, there is no hope for them. It is irreversible. Okay, so you die, you never give your life to Christ. You keep it yourself. The second death, done. That's where you're judged, you're through. Um, you're eternally separated from God. Uh, physical death is the separation of the body from the spirit. Okay, spiritual death, the way, of us, the way all of us are born, is the spiritual separation of each of us from God. Eternal death, or the second death, is the eternal separation of a person from God. There is no escape from the second death. All right, so I guess to sum it up is the second death is not annihilation, it's eternal separation. And that's where, you know, when we think of death is a person dies now, but they're not annihilated. They're still, their soul is still living, you know, their spirit is, is alive, or soul. So... With the second death, it doesn't make sense because in the last verse says, and the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. Those who worship the beast in his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. So how does second death and eternal torment and misery go together? Is that death refers to destruction, separation, not annihilation. Which, you know, is, I think it's our just concept of it. And that's where, you know, again, there's, there's debate on this. So, but that's the one that makes most sense, is how can eternal torment along with second death work together? Is because you don't, you don't actually get annihilated. You're, you're oh, separated from God forever. In a state, which is very clear, forever and ever, just like you're going to be in eternity with God forever and ever. So, it's a terrible, wretched thing. My goodness. So, Elmer, I hope that helps. Um... You know, again, there's there's debate on that, but uh, you know, you read the scriptures. But that's that's what I came up with, the best of my knowledge. And I, again, I pulled these from other sources. All right, that's the second death. <clears throat> Any other thoughts on this before we move on? So, what did you land on? I feel like you just—it's eternal separation from God. You're 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 not annihilated. You're you exist forever and ever. Separated from God, never to enter His presence again. That, at least that's what I'm getting from all these verses, from how how eternal torment coexists with the second death. Is that it's not it's not an annihilation death, it's a separation death. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the only one that makes sense because it, forever and ever, that 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 alone makes the big change is that forever and ever just like it talks about forever and ever in all most cases in the bible god reigns forever and ever it's the same you know there's not a stop it's it's forever so yeah it took a little study to figure that one out. i was having a headache my goodness all right so um <clears throat> So the point of today, we're only going to spend a few minutes, I thought I'd have more time, but we probably aren't, is that our, everything we've learned about is not for you to just retain and die with it, it's for this. Uh, First Peter says, instead you must worship Christ as Lord of your life, and if someone asks you about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. And I know for me personally, I have never been really good at that, explaining it. I think... You know, maybe some of you guys have. Jesse's been pretty good at it. 
because he doesn't, you know, he doesn't try to go into everything. He just says, this is what happened to me. Good enough. You know, it's this is evidence. And beyond that is, can you explain why you believe what you believe? Um, this word explain also make a defense is from the Greek word apologia, which is about intelligent reasoning. Uh, it's uh, throughout to adequately address the issues that is raised uh, is the term for making a legal defense in an ancient court. Apologetics is used for supplying evidence for the Christian faith. All right, so just be ready. That's what Peter's saying. Be ready to explain to somebody why you believe the Bible. So today I want to see how well you can do that. Okay, so here we go. I've got some questions, and I've got about 11 questions, and I'm going to ask everybody a question, and I want to see how you answer it. And if you can give some good answers, and I, I ain't looking for the most pristine, right? I just want to know what you, what do you, what do you think? And uh, I will give you, I'm going to give you two of these if you get the answer. And I might break it in half if you try really well. So, <laughs> all right, so let's go. Who wants to go first? Any volunteers? Yeah! All right. The Bible has been changed over the last thousands of years, so we can't trust its accuracy, okay? I'm an unbeliever. I come up to Elmer. Um, your Bible sucks. You know, it, it was, it was... It was written 2,000 years ago. It's changed over time. Who knows what it really meant? Okay, Elmer, what do you think? What would you say? I thought I was going to be able to choose my question. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can wait. No, can I, this is it. Wait? Yeah, sure. Anyone else? Josh? Well, it's, I would tell them that even though it's changed a lot, it's still consistent and never um, and it never contradicts itself <laughs> never contradicts mm. itself and even over Money, time guys. it's year after year the number one seller so there has to be <coughs> some truth in that all right so let's think about this uh, for the new people come in welcome uh, we're, we're, we just talked about First Peter, how it says be ready to make a defense be ready to explain why you believe what you believe and we're actually going to test this how well do you, are you able to to explain why you believe the Bible's true, why you believe Jesus, and we're going to do that. And I'm going to give I'm going to give two of these to someone who gives a good answer, uh, and maybe half if you try. All right. <laughs> so Josh, we just asked Josh, the Bible's been changed over the last thousands of years, so how can we trust its accuracy? And Josh said that um, even though it's changed, it's still it's, no. It, even though it's changed, it's still it's still, even though it's changed, it still doesn't contradict, it, contradict, contradict itself. Contradict so, itself, okay. And then also, over time, year after year, it's still number one seller. That okay. means there's some truth in it. All right, so is anyone satisfied with this, not satisfied with this answer? Okay. Elmer likes it, you don't like it? Who else? What do you think? Let's be honest here. Hey, if an atheist comes up against Homeboy, is he going to be able to stand? Somewhat, okay? All right, let me give you something, Josh. I think the big thing is this word here, changed, and you agreed with it. All right? You agreed that it's changed, but it's still good. Has the Bible changed from when it was originally written up until now? Yeah, translation. Okay. Does that, just because it was translated, does it mean that it's changed? But if you'll try to go from that out of it, emphasize the translations to change. Right, right. You didn't keep going. There's not conversation. So the big question is, okay, we the Bible was written 2,000 years ago. You know how they do that test where you tell one person, they tell another, and it's totally different by the time it gets to you 10 people later? Is that what's going on with the Bible? Or is it the exact same message they had? Is Do we have the exact same one? Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, we do. How will you defend that? How do you know? It doesn't contradict. Okay. Well, just what if they give you an example of a contradicting passage? Yeah. What's an example of a contradicting passage? Yeah, that's a good one. You can ask. Sure. Anybody else want to help Josh out with this? <laughs> and it's proven that locations that are now being found are because of the Bible. 
right? They'll say the the some locations, some towns, some cities are next to here and here, and like some uh some uh what do you call that? What do you call that? Um, landmarks. Okay. Yep. And then that's when they dug up the cities and they can prove that hey, this is true. Okay. All right. So um, the, I think the big question is. Uh, what we learned in class, we learned some things about this, and uh, nobody, maybe no one quite remembers, but we learned about the uh, the text. It was written in Greek, uh, the the New Testament at least, and the Old Testament, Hebrew and Aramaic, um, just Hebrew, New Testament, Greek and Aramaic. Thank you. My bad. Sorry. Um, we have a scholar in our group, so she's going to help us, and a coming up scholar. Um, so what we were learning is that the actual, the manuscripts that are available today from way back when, when it was originally written, are like 1,500 feet tall. If you were to stack them all on top of each other, all of the manuscripts available of the original is immense. It's huge. There's more evidence about Jesus. There's more, you know, we have more texts that went that were original to then now than most any other literature. So uh, I brought this book. If anyone wants to kind of look at it, is uh, evidence of Adam's verdict. It talks about that. How do we know the Bible's still accurate? You know, has it changed? And and in reality, the Bible has not changed from then till now. It has not. It's been translated from the original. No, nothing's different. Same words, just used in English. No, that's not true. Well, it, yes, but it. But it, like, tra- you lose so much in translation. You okay? Yeah, you lose you lose some of the meaning, but it's a, it's the same. It's the word hasn't changed. The, the we're not we're not saying like uh, in the beginning was the word, and we're not we're not changing the the sequence in the beginning but there's was there's people that like omit stuff like for example like Genesis 3 8 where it says that Adam was with Eve in the garden some translations leave that out yeah like the message paraphrase and it depends on the translation some some paraphrase some summarize um, but it's not it hasn't been changed it's not it's not a different um but what's the different the definition of changed? Altered, uh, transformed. And not pulling it out of your own mind. And and the so the issue, like like you said, is we have the originals today. You you can you have them in Greek, and you can take your English and you can go back to those and you can see that you know this the the best we can translate from Greek to English has been done. The best we know. You can go back you can go right back to the original and check for yourself. Uh, so, you know, are we changing things around? Is the gospel different and all that? No. 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 I think, that, what is it, a 99.8% accuracy or something. You know, there's some very, maybe a couple commas, maybe, that are messed up. But, you know, the inerrancy is, is and that's huge, you know. Is the Bible inerrant? Is it? That's a big one. Okay, Carlos having some, oh, but, you know, when you study it, you, that's what I hear is that when you actually look at it, you start doubting, and it's tough. You got to work through it. So, all right. So that's a big one that's come up. Hey, your Bible sucks. What are you going to say? Uh, I don't know. I mean, hey, you know. Right. Anybody else? So, yeah. Where's my candy? Oh yeah. Do you, <laughs> you think he deserves he two? Give him half. Give him half. All right. M M&M. and No M and M. We're going to give you one for that. Uh, only, only because his answer changed over time, just a little bit. All right, next one. How do you know Jesus really existed? Anybody? Two candies. I'll give you half if you try. One if you give a decent one. I see a show on the Discovery Channel. I heard it. No, no, no. Let him go. I heard found the the (laughs) Hold on. We'll give you a chance. I saw that on the Discovery Channel. Wait. Say it it again. I can't hear (laughs) over. Wait. wait, What did you find? I didn't hear you. I said I saw a show on the Discovery Channel and they explained it. That what? Huh? 
Yeah, <laughs> Jesus did exist. What did they find? Uh, they find the cloth that they wrapped him in. They wrapped him yeah. in. Oh, I wow. Actually, actually. Yep. <laughs> Alright. Is that enough? Of course. There's, there's no. evidence outside of the Bible um, from different tribes and people who know of Jesus. Okay. Clients are still there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we go to Josh, before we go to Josh's quick, uh, quick answer, uh, what anybody know of any evidences outside the Bible? Yes, there are. What anybody know? Different scholars. Okay, Josephus. He's one. He was a he was a, a Jewish scholar who worked in the Roman for the Romans, and he wrote about Jesus. All right. Any any others? Philo. Philo. Sounds like a. Some guy. He doesn't know. Someone. Explain it to him. It's, you, you may not know everybody. You know, you know the names, which is pretty good. Anything? Anything? Um, you said tribes, some, right? Yeah, there was an African tribe that uh, talked about this powerful man who wow. walked around, you know, and like they just feel his spirit. Wow. They were talking about me. Hey, uh, they're freezing. <laughs> over here. Can, you, Can you lower it? We're dying. Thank great. you for YouTube. That's air conditioner. Elmer's got his own climate. Uh, uh, so, um, all right. So there's evidence outside the Bible to prove that Jesus existed. There's an African tribe who said there's this guy who's doing this amazing stuff, and you can just feel the the power in him. I didn't know that. That's awesome. All right. We had Josephus. We had Pine the Younger and Josh. What were you gonna say? Different scholars. Different yeah. scholars, okay. I, I tell you what, just being generally I'm gonna give one each. Shiona, which two do you want? I'll take this. Yeah. Why did he take two? Because he had a good, pretty guard, good answer. All right, <laughs> Joe, Jesus is cloth. I'll give you one. Oh, Snickers. Is that? Snickers. <laughs> oh, sorry, my bad. Jesus is cloth. What do you want, Snickers. Josh? Uh, Skittles. Oh. I don't have Skittles. <laughs> M&M's? Yeah, yeah. Can I have my Snickers, please? You already got it. Uh, all right, cool. All right, how do you know Jesus really existed? Boom. Nobody said, no, oh, because it's in the Bible. Because the Bible isn't really accurate, right? Oh, <laughs> oh. you got me. Okay. <laughs> Jesus was just a copycat of other ancient religions, right? I mean, what, what are you going to say to that? He was just like this other guy we learned about. This isn't all... All religions don't they kind of have the same story? Jesus was a copycat, but he was the only one. If Jesus was a copycat, so there's one difference in it. He rose when he died. He rose again. Okay. He, he deserves two for that. Okay. Before we give candies out, anybody else? The foundation. Jesse, anybody want to help Jesse out? What other one is really close to Jesus that there's claims? Wasn't it Hades? No, bro. Muhammad. No. No, well, no. I mean, no. Muhammad was a prophet. He didn't. He didn't claim to rise from the dead or anything. No, but no, no. There's some that are really close. We learned about them specifically. There's two. I forgot their name. Yes, you did. I feel like it's Buddha. No. Nope. Is it not Buddha? Not Buddha. Gandhi. What is the name? <laughs> what is it? All right. I'm gonna tell you. There's two. Mithras and Osiris. Okay, those are the two big ones. But there's lots of others. Ancient. Um, you know, like Middle Eastern, Jay. just religion. Kimberly. Kimberly. All right. So they say they 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 were they would there was this uh, atheist who posed this story. He said, okay, who is this? He was born of a virgin. He was um, he he was died on and rose on the third day. Uh, he came back. So all this stuff. And they say, who is it? And he said, Jesus. No, actually, that's Mithras. And they would say, you know, he was actually born out of a rock, and he was this and that, because that's the storyline. But they, 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 a lot of the things are twisted in it. That takes more to believe he was born from a rock. Yeah. So I mean, there's things in it that's similar, but it's not exactly, uh, it's not exactly the same. But what's the big difference? Okay, which one actually came back to life? Only one. You know, Jesus. So. Some of the it, some of the ancient religions do have some similarities, but maybe that's just because you know just the, everybody's looking forward to it, and you kind of know. Anybody else have thoughts? Which ones do you want? Those two. These two. Yes. Perfect. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Next one. 
Uh, Kim or who do you think? I have the answer for that. All right, here we go. How do we know? How do we know Jesus actually rose from the dead? All right, raise your hand. Okay, Elmer, here we go. But when he uh, rose, then he still had his scars. Okay. That's biblical, though. When he rose, he still had the scars. All right. So how do we know? It? How can you prove that, though? Outside of the Bible? No, no, no. You could use oh. the Bible. How, how can you prove that? Just Not just because the Bible says, but if you're going to do that, how do we know that that... Are you telling me the Bible's like... Oh, how do you know that... <laughs> how do you know that the, the, the testimony of the people who wrote it is accurate? Ooh. That's really the question. Those multiple people. Right? Okay, so there was... how It says up to how many... There's a number, actually. Not Three. that you need to know. 500 at one time viewed him, saw him, all right? Uh, okay, so what was your answer to that, Elmer? You said, okay, the scars in a sense, people, people said that they saw his scars, all right? So there's eyewitness testimony. All right, Josh? 500. There's a lot of, there's a lot of evidence of that. Some Which of them, what is it? What is his it? body wasn't found. Okay. Christianity today, that's big proof because our foundation is on that. And if it wasn't true that he rose from the dead, somebody would have shut down this religion a long time ago. And then, of course, the guards, they were pretty good at their jobs, so they would have made sure he was dead. So afterwards, when the people started witnessing, they saw him and stuff like that, like thousands, I mean, yeah, thousands of people seeing him. Yeah. That's proof itself. All right. Okay. Any, anybody else have some questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give him one. No, <laughs> he only gets one. I, want, I want two Snickers. I want whatever you want to give me. Surprise me. All of that was all, right. all anybody on else? mine. None yeah. of it was barely with you. I'm going to give you diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. People. Nobody else. Kimberly. <laughs> no, Kimberly <laughs> actually. One of you <laughs> twin sisters. No, Kim something. actually had a good idea. All right, Kim, tell us. No. Don't you want Kim, this? You Kim from Puya. No, we didn't. Who okay, cares? Just together. tell say us. I don't know it. Who is? Who is? Okay, who do you tell us? No, no, I didn't. Look it. Come no, on. I don't want to. All right. Julia, what to learn? Just forget it. <laughs> okay. Julia. How do you know Jesus actually rose from the dead? Any other thoughts? <laughs> Anybody know the arguments of why they say he didn't? Yeah. Okay, why why do the Muslims believe that he didn't rise from the dead? What's their what's their um, the stolen body thing? No. They believe he never really died. <laughs> that he was just like in a coma. He rose back to life. Oh. How could you then the question is how could you survive that? Some people did survive that, but if if he was in a coma or in shock or whatever it is. The, um, the guards would have definitely... Their job was to kill whoever was on the cross. They so. stabbed him in the side and water came out showing that his lungs because were Because at the end of the day, full. they were good at what no, they did. That's why they had the position. And it was either Jesus' life or their life if right. they failed. Okay. There's another one where it was um, actually just like a copycat of Jesus that took his place on the cross. Right. His twin brother came Jesus, back that, that all of a sudden. Ah, yeah. So we give them two, or uh, yeah. which ones you want? Okay. Give them away. Here. Yeah. Ooh, baby. All right, here we go. The next one. Okay, that's biblical accuracy. Next topic is eternity. Ooh, I love it. Is there really life after death? Steve, you want to hit any? How do you know? Uh, Jesus rose. All right, Jesus rose from the dead. All right, so you would have to go a series of proofs to get there. You'd have to first prove that Jesus is you know, he's really real. It is accurate, all this. And now, because he rose, that's why. So, you, you know, you'd have to look some backup up. All right, but that's his, that's his, um, his answer. Anybody else? Carla, you got something in there? She don't know. Somebody help her out. <laughs> How do you know there's really life after death? What are the alternatives? Death and death. Death and that's it, right? You're done. Uh, anything else? Big one is reincarnation. You come back as a little daisy or a cow or something. Or a rat. A cockroach. A cockroach. Okay, reincarnation's pretty popular right now. Yeah, like that one right there, that's probably somebody, Juan or something. So, yeah. 
She says God can't Isn't be loving. Isn't he also a wrathful God, though, too? Okay, so no, he's just. how could a loving God, because he's also wrathful, and Elmer says because he's just, explain. <coughs> he has to. You're, hey, you're getting there. I'll give you three of whatever you want, man. Oh, let him finish, then Josh will go. Oh, God. Now, I got unlimited source well, right here. Well, if you didn't, yeah, you're going to be upset, man. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Well, I can't finish. All right, so, he can't because finish. he's a just God, that means that he would, well, could you say, not necessarily get you get what you deserve, but if you're not asking for forgiveness or grace, then you don't get it. Okay. I don't think you, you, God sends people to hell. I think we send ourselves. So it's not mm. that. So it's more like free will, isn't it? Because we choose which mm. way we want to go oh, in our life. Josh, want to add anything? I was going to say, we were, once we're born, we're destined to go to hell. Okay. Because we were born in sin. Okay. God, being a loving God, gives us plenty of opportunities to change that around. And at the end, like I said, God doesn't send us to hell. Okay, he so, so so First Peter says, be ready to give an offense. Hey, how could your God be loving if he sends people to hell? And what are you going to say? If I'm the unbeliever, what are you going to tell me? I just answer. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, like that? You know, are you, you know, you had some good, you know, do it, do it with gentleness, do it with respect. Don't yell at me, but you're going because you're stupid. <laughs> you know, say that. <laughs> What would you say? You know, and we look, we did a whole series on this. We learned about it. And, and one of them, which is what uh, Kimberly said, is that we have free will. And we learned that everybody in hell chooses to be there. It's God gives us the option, right? Because He loves us, He sent His Son to die. That was our way of escaping it. Because we get we deserve hell. You know, we've sinned against Him. But He gave us grace by sending his son and whoever whoever's in hell is because you've rejected his son so uh there there's we're going to learn about this next week but they say hell is the door is locked from the inside not the outside like god locks you in you lock yourself in because you don't want to you don't want to be with him in heaven so what's the alternative that's the alternative it's separated from god forever yes did I give you? No, you didn't give me no candy. Oh, I did. Okay, I owe a lot of candy. Man, Kim, okay, what do you want? I told you I'd give you three for these. So there, whoop, my bad. Mommy. Yep, justice, mercy. What do you mind? If I had this candy, it would have been All right, and if you guys get diabetes, don't give me the bill. Well, uh, okay. Huh? Sure, what do you want? Okay. All right, uh, this one for Steve. Hell is going to be a big party because all my friends are going to be there. <laughs> hey, if I say that, what are you going to say? Yeah. All right. I'll see yeah. you up on the way. <laughs> I'll bring you here. Steve, what are you going to say, Steve? 1046. Unfortunately, that's not real. All right. There's no big party. <laughs> All right, say, well, have fun. <laughs> Is that Actually, it's torturous, and you're not going to like it. Yeah, you might have to explain what hell really is. But, you know, say they're an unbeliever, it says, oh, you believe in hell. Uh, you know, why do people go there? I don't know. Open it up, because ultimately we're trying to get to the gospel, ultimately. That's our goal, is not just to prove them right, but to tell them about Jesus. And that's a pretty cool way to get there. You know, with hell, hey, you know what? I might be there too if it weren't for great. I don't know. You know, you can. No, I would just tell him. I was, well, I'll give him examples. Like, hey, have you ever felt love before? Have you ever felt compassion before? Have you ever all these positive things? Have you ever felt that? And then they'll be like, yeah. It's like imagine you don't have that. You have all the pain, the suffering, just everything negative, and then that's what hell's gonna be. Yeah. So the hell was originally designed for the devil, designed for the devil and his angels, and we go because you know we we sinned against God, and He gives us, He's given us, He's given us His Son. That's our payment. You believe in Him, and and you you know you you 
accept him as your savior, you're out. You, you transfer right over. You're free. But, uh, you know, it's our choice if we want to go. So uh, it's, it isn't going to be a big party, by the way. It's eternal torment and separation from God. It's going to be rich and um, <laughs> worse, worse than you can imagine. Uh, we, we heard there was a quote by Timothy Keller, and they said, uh, you know, all this talk about uh, torment and all that, do you think it's a metaphor? And he said, yes, it, I do, for something much worse. Mm. You know, so, <laughs> you know. Uh, okay, one more. Do all religions teach the same things about the afterlife? No. 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 Are you sure? Yeah. Because um, there's not going to be like, what? Did I give any tips? I think I owe you two, Josh. You can have this one if you want. Oh, intercepted. So, <laughs> some religions like have it based on like what you do here is what you'll earn later. So, okay, so like, you karma, based on works, karma. Right. Right. So it doesn't. Like, there, there is no the what sets our religion apart from others is like grace for them. It's like them. Doing all others. Enough. For their God, and in ours, it's our God did enough for us. Right. So next week, they're going to talk about this at the Regeneration Project. They're going to actually talk about this question. Uh, so if you're interested in more, it's going to be there. All right, we're going to go on to our last topic. Oh, sorry, one more. How can I be sure I'm going to have eternal life with Jesus? How can you really know? Excuse me. How can I be sure? How do I know? I wrote it. <laughs> How do I know? It's written there. I want to know. You, you won't truly know. You won't truly really know. You won't truly really know, but you can just do your best. No, I think you will okay. know. Like there's, and it's not like a feeling because feelings are passive. But uh huh. Um, I don't think you can know because... <laughs> no, you can no. know. <laughs> well, for me, I don't think you know because, like, if you look back, disciples and all that, the true followers, you don't... We don't have... I, I can't bring nobody back from the dead. Well... I don't have faith like that. Anybody, anyone else have... Because, uh, <laughs> because there's a... Like, <laughs> Jonah those thoughts. guys are, like, definitely going. Oh, oh. how... Uh, like the people who can do faith, miracles? No, like our, like our faith topic. is like an ounce, not even an ounce. How, how much faith, faith does it take to get into heaven? How much does it take? A lot. It does. I agree with Josh. I don't think you can really know. You can't really know. You can't really know. I mean, you, you can, can try here it. on earth to be just like how Jesus just told it. us to be. <laughs> like to, talk, like right. to go out and preach his word and be like him. And you can try each day, but I don't yeah. think you'll... But you'll never know. You'll never so know. right now, if you died, you you don't really know if you're going to be... No. But okay. we hope for the best. For you hope for the best. Okay, good for you. I just, <laughs> anybody else? Well, that's that's not really... Because that's kind of like living your life like, oh, if I'm a good person, I'm going to go to heaven. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's not... So what if you... What if, what if you, Josh and Kim, what if you guys <laughs> sinned bad today? Ooh, Kim? Bad. Bad. Well, I mean, what are you going to do, huh? No, you didn't get a chance. You didn't get a chance. You didn't get a chance. No, you just sinned. No, no, no. You cussed out your mom, and then all of a sudden a car hits you. Boom, you died. God says that every sin can be forgiven except one. That you can't. So would you go to hell or heaven? Oh, well, that's not for me to decide myself. But there's no, there's no greater sin. All sins equal. So me cussing so, out my mom. If it as long as like murdering people like go to heaven as somebody. long as they don't. Yeah, but it's not based on work. So like if you accept right. grace, if yeah, you yeah. accept Christ, who's got the verse here? Already, Ephesians like, two something. You should be I'm sure of that. It's Ephesians not two. That you you like like do I have? Do Let's I settle this right now. Colossians. Like, you're not walking out of this room all. until you know. So it's Colossians actually. No, like if you're not sure of it Colossians. now, like it makes me question your. All right, faith. so guys, uh, let's just oh let's just squash this one right now. <laughs> let's squash this one. It's Colossians. All right, Ephesians. Uh, Sione, you know where it is? It's Colossians. By grace you have been saved through faith. What is verse it? <laughs> Ephesians 2 5. Even when we were dead in sins, made us okay, alive. Okay, wait, wait, time out, time out. Here we go. Here we, let's hear it. Go ahead. It says, I'll read for it. But God, being rich in mercy, 
because of his great of his great love with with which he loved us even when we were dead in sins made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved and he raised us up and seated us together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus all right jump over to verse 8 read that one and 9 for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not of yourselves it is a gift of God not of works so that no one should boast that's it okay read that slow so it Read says, again, for by grace, Josh, Kim, listen to this. Yeah. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It's a gift of God. Okay? Not a thing you could do. It's a gift of God. Uh, not a result of works. Okay? Not things you do. It's not a result of that so that no one can boast. Like Josh said, those people had tons of faith. They're for sure going. There's no way to measure how, you know, how well, you know, any, there's no way to measure because it's not something you're, based off what you do, it's a gift. Mm -hmm. So how much faith, you know, we can't, well, he had about 50%, you're definitely, no, there's no way. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh, here's another one in Hebrews of the apostles actually saying that um, we desire each of you to show the same um, earnest, I don't know, uh, I'm guessing that's the same, desire that they have to have the full assurance of the hope until the end so that they have you can that know. assurance and let me just end with one thing we're going to leave out but the holy spirit is your guarantee that's what it is the holy spirit it says the holy spirit you're sealed you're marked you're in and that's that's how you know is because the holy spirit in you is changing you and I mean, you can feel it too but you can see you're changing you're becoming more like God, and that's your, I am definitely going. Because you know, I know, it's, I'm not going because I'm, of all that I do, that has nothing to do with why I'm going. I'm going because I believe in Jesus, and He's paid for my sins, and I'm saved. That's why. Because I put all of my trust in Him. And He said, anyone who does that will never be ashamed. It ain't kicking you out. So you can know. You can know, girl. You can walk out of here with your head lifted high. I'm going. You know it, Kim. Okay. All right, debatable. Debatable. Okay, so uh, that's it for today.